Hey folks, Dr. Phil here. This is going to be a video on variable and absorption costing. So uh, let's, with no further ado, let's uh, let's jump into it. So let's talk a little bit about the differences. Okay, so these are these are the first thing to understand is these are two different ways of costing products. Okay, so variable costing is going to include direct materials, direct labor, but only variable overhead. Right before it's been all the overhead, variable costing is just the variable part of the overhead. The fixed part is treated differently, as we will see. Absorption costing includes direct materials, direct labor, and both variable and fixed. So absorption, kind of up to this point, is probably what you're used to. Um, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Variable, variable is, again, materials and labor, but only, only the variable overhead. Now, absorption costing is what's required by GAP. You remember GAP, generally accepted accounting principles, for external reporting purposes, but this can sometimes result in misleading product cost info and poor managerial decisions. So as a result of this, some companies, internally anyway, will um, will use variable costing methods. So here is um, kind of what we just said. This is kind of a different way of showing it, right? Like a graphic. Absorption costing, materials, labor, and both variable and fixed overhead, right? That's all being included in product costs that, of course, are inventoried and ultimately are expensed through cost of goods sold. Now, on the right-hand side, we have variable costing. This is what we're going to be really spending this chapter on. We have materials, we have labor, we have variable overhead. But if you notice, the fixed overhead is just, that's going to go to period expenses. What that really means is it's just going to be expensed on the income statement um, during that period. It's not going to make it, it's not going to be capitalized on the balance sheet. It's not going to sit in any kind of inventory account. It won't ultimately be expensed through cost of goods sold once they sell the product. It's just going to be immediately expensed on the income statement. So bottom line, variable versus absorption. What do you need to remember? It's how we treat the fixed overhead. If it's absorption costing, we include it. If it's variable costing, we do not. So let's look at an example of computing um, unit product cost using both of the two methods. So we've got a little bit of info here. We've got materials, $4 a unit. We've got labor, eight bucks per unit. We've got the units produced, 60,000 units. Variable overhead is $3 per unit. And then fixed overhead is 600,000 per year, okay? So absorption costing versus variable, we're going to include the four, the materials, the eight for labor, the three for variable overhead, and the 10 for fixed overhead, right? Because remember, absorption is including all of them. The variable costing, on the other hand, is going to include materials, labor, and variable overhead. But the fixed overhead, that 600,000 you see up here, fixed overhead, that's just going to be expensed straight out as a current period expense. Now, if we add these up, we can kind of see that there's a difference, right? Total product cost per unit for absorption, because it's including the fixed overhead, the extra 10, is 25. The variable costing, it's only 15. Because, again, think about that $10 difference between the 25 and the 15. Of course, it's the $10 in fixed overhead per unit. So how does this, de how does this affect income reporting? Okay, so... If we look at the information that we've been given here, the materials, labor, variable overhead, and fixed overhead are all this, that's the stuff we looked at before on the last slide. Now they're giving us some extra info, which is selling and admin expenses. The variable $2 per unit, fixed 200,000 a year, and then the sales price is $40 per unit, okay? So in the first year, and this is important, in year one, they produce 60,000 and they sell 60,000, so obviously there are no units in any inventory because they sold them all. Year two produced 60,000, but they only sold 40,000. So there's 20,000 sitting in ending inventory. And then in year three, they produced another 60, but they sold 80, which of course is the 60 they produced in year three and the 20,000 they had left at the end of year two. So so by the end, we get to the end of year three, obviously there's um, there's no units in ending inventory. So income reporting with respect to units produced equaling units sold. Um, now, if we notice here, um, and this is think of this as sort of like year one, 60,000 pairs were produced, 60,000 were sold. So absorption costing is going to be the same as variable costing because there are no units sitting in ending inventory. Anytime you got units sitting in ending inventory, the two methods are going to be different. Think about why, because of how they treat that fixed overhead. So if we look at the um, 
this company, Ice Age company, if we look at their income statement, we can just come right down to income. We can see 580,000. And then we can see income, 580,000. And then if you kind of go through, you can you can see that some of this is laid out a little differently. But you'll notice it's all accounted for, right? Sales, 2.4. Sales, 2.4. You've got cost of goods sold. Now, of course, over here, it's 25 because they're including the fixed overhead as part of cost of goods sold. Over here, the variable cost of goods sold was 15. Again, because they're not including that extra 10. And then we've got the variable selling and admin expenses, 60,000 times 2. Um, the ten dollars um, for fixed overhead is basically this six hundred thousand that you see down here. So again, it's it's going to be expensed. Um, they just they're just sort of included at different places on the income statement. But just remember this: if the units produced equal the units sold, there's going to be no difference in income between the two methods. Now, what if the units produced exceed the units sold? Now, this was if we go back real quick, this was year two, right? They produced sixty thousand. They only sold 40,000, they had 20,000 in ending inventory. So now you can see here 60,000 pairs and they only sold 40,000, right? So now absorption costing is 320,000, but variable costing is only 120,000. So then we can kind of look down here in these two com sort of comparable income statements comparing the two methods and we can kind of get an idea as to why. So if we start with the sales, the sales are obviously the same, 1.6, 1.6. Again, cost of goods sold, they sold 40,000 times 25. Again, the 25 is important because that 25 is including, under absorption costing, that extra $10 per unit of fixed overhead. Now, and then we've got gross profit, 600,000. If we look over to the um, variable costing income statement, Variable expenses, we've got the variable cost of goods sold. Notice this is only 15, right? 40,000 times 15. Again, the difference is the $10 fixed overhead. They're not including that in variable costing. And then variable selling and admin expenses, of course, are separate, as they are over here as well as they should be. We have contribution margin, and then we have the fixed expenses, 600,000. And then we have our fixed selling and admin expenses. So what you notice here is that there's a difference, right? There's a difference of 200,000, right? Um, now think about why that would be. So why, why is there a difference? Well, the reason is because we've produced 40,000, but we only sold, excuse me, I'm sorry, we produced 60,000, but we only sold 40,000. <clears> so some of that, some of the, um, the fixed overhead um, that's, you know, being straight out expensed, over on the variable costing side, we can see the fixed overhead, 600,000, isn't all being expensed over here because we're only expensing it under absorption costing when we sell it, right? So that's why there's a big difference between the 320 and the 120. Now, what if, we, what if the scenario is the other way around? What if the units produced are less than the units sold? So let's say now this is year three, they produce 60,000 pairs, and they sold 80,000 pairs, right? Remember, they had the 20,000 left over at the end of year two. So absorption costing, 840,000. Variable costing is now 1.04 million. So think about what's happened. That 200,000 difference we saw in year two, if I go back, this is year two. 320 for absorption, 120 for variable has now reversed itself because all of those extra units have now been sold. So again, the, the key is to look at the cost of goods sold, 80,000 units times 25. Again, remember that 25 includes that $10 per unit of fixed overhead. And of course, fixed overhead over here is 600,000. So again, think about why there are these differences, right? Under variable costing, the, the one on the right, the fixed overhead is all anything, any fixed overhead that was incurred in that period was just, it's just expensed out immediately in its entirety. Whereas for absorption costing, it won't be expensed out until the units are sold because it's being it's not being expensed straight out on the income statement. It's going to appear on the income statement in a future period as and when it's sold as part of cost of goods sold. So summarizing income reporting. So if production equals sales, then absorption is the same as variable. Your net income is going to be the same. If production is greater than sales, then absorption um, is going to be greater than variable with respect to net income. And you can see, of course, down here, this is this is true. If production is less than sales, then absorption is going to be less than variable 
with respect to net income. All right, so what about unit cost under absorption costing? So you can see here absorption costing 60,000 units produced and then absorption costing 100,000 units produced. Now, if you notice, everything is pretty much the same, right? Materials, four, labor, eight, variable, three. Fixed overhead, we've got 600,000, but here it's being divided by 60,000 units, whereas for absorption costing, it's being divided by 100,000 units, right? So because of the difference in the number of units, obviously this is giving us a, a greater quotient for absorption costing 10 compared to a lesser quotient um, over here of six, right? So depending on how many units you produce in a period is going to determine what this is. So this, is, this could be criticized because if managers just overproduce, right, the more units they produce, the lower the per unit is going to be, right? So this this has been criticized in the past because, you know, you could argue managers, are, you know, they have an incentive to overproduce to get these numbers down. Overproduction can be a problem because what if you uh, what if you can't sell it? OK, so what about income under absorption costing? So, again, we're looking we're looking at absorption costing, right? OK, so don't think about variable for a second. This is just absorption. Now, what you'll notice here is. In year one, 60,000 units produced, 60,000 units sold. Year two, 100,000 units produced, 60,000 units sold. So we can, again, go line by line. Sales is the same, 2.4. Cost of goods sold, is this is where it's different, right? 60,000 times 25 compared to 60,000 times 21. So think about the 25 and the 21. So if you produce more, like here, they produced... Um, more in, in this scenario, right, year one, 100,000 units compared to 60. By producing more, they were able to get this per unit number down from 25 over here to 21, which, of course, lowered cost of goods sold substantially and, of course, increased their gross profit, which also increased their net income. So what about income under variable costing? Now, you notice with variable costing, same kind of thing, right, 60,000 units produced, 60,000 sold on the left. 100,000 units produced, 60,000 units sold on the right. So look at the income. Straight away, you notice that the income is the same. So let's go through this one line by line. Sales is the same, 2.4. So variable expenses, um, you can see variable cost of goods sold, 60,000 times 15. Same over here. Variable selling and expenses are both the same. Contribution margin, 1.38 million, 1.38. So we're good on that. And then you can see here, fixed expenses, fixed overhead, and fixed selling and admin, 600 and 200. So the good thing about the variable costing method is that even if you produce more, it's not having that effect on the per unit cost and thus the effect on cost of goods sold that the absorption costing method is having. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is target price. So here there are three steps to determine the selling price. Number one, determine the product cost per unit using absorption costing. Number two, determine the target markup on the product cost per unit. And then number three, add the target markup to the product cost to find the target selling price. So as an example, you see how easy this is. So the absorption cost per unit in this example is 25. The target markup per unit is um, 60 so we took the 25, multiplied it by 60%. So you could just do 25 times 0.6. That will give you the 15. So the target selling price per unit is 40 bucks. Okay, next thing, special orders, analyzing special orders. So if you're going to, in order to do this, um, you've got to think about covering all your fixed and variable costs over the long run. So fixed costs don't change. Well, that's true to a point. It's what we call within the relevant range that don't change. But assuming they don't change, we should accept special order if the price exceeds the variable costs over the short run. So let's take a look at a special order analysis. So sales, 1,000 units times 22. So they would generate 22,000 in revenue. Variable costs, 1,000 times 17, 17 grand. So the contribution margin would be 5,000, right? So they're basically going to make 22 on the special order. It's going to cost them 17. They're going to walk away with five. So what about variable costing for services? Because service um, companies may do this too. So let's take a look at a scenario of a special offer analysis. 
So the company could generate 35,000 in revenue. Their variable costs are 30,000. And their contribution margin is thus 5 million. If we look at an income statement for variable costing, we can see this company has revenue of 6 million. They have different expenses here, variable expenses, wages, fuel, foods and food and beverages. They got a contribution margin of 2.4. They've taken out their fixed expenses, depreciation and rent, and they have income of 1.68 million. Now don't forget, anytime you're looking at a variable costing income statement, it's always going to be the ver it's always going to start with revenue, then your variable expenses, then your contribution margin, then your fixed expenses, and then your income. Okay, next thing, contribution margin ratio. So this is the percent of sales that remain after subtracting variable expenses. So we're simply going to take the contribution margin divided by sales. That's literally it. So you can look here, a couple of quick examples. Contribution margin is 672 grand divided by the 1.2 million in sales. We got 56%. And then for this, for the Eastern Territory, contribution margin is 708 divided by the 1.2. And the contribution margin is slightly better. Um, at 59%. So what about contribution margin by product line? So this, in, if you do an analysis like this, it might help you to figure out things like the selling price per unit. Maybe you want to decrease your variable cost of goods sold per unit. You may also want to increase your sales efforts. So you can see here, they're looking at hockey skates and figure skates. They've got their sales amounts. They've got their variable expenses. They've got their contribution margin ratios like we just calculated. And they might be looking at this and determining, okay, well, maybe for figure skates, we'd like that um, contribution margin ratio to be a little higher. So we could adjust the selling price potentially. We could maybe look at the variable expenses. Um, obviously not fixed expenses because that's below the contribution margin. But we can certainly look at variable expenses. Maybe there's some places we can save. Um, for example, maybe we could bulk order materials to bring the um, direct material cost down, which of course would, um, you know, invariably lower cost of goods sold. Okay, that's it for this video, and I will see you all soon.